Now let's look at the conversion the other way around from a JSON format to an XML. So we have this data set with orders. We have three orders here in JSON format and we want to convert that to the XML format. I'm going to add a new integration flow under the package converters. Let's name it JSON to XML. Let's create a connection. Let's define the address as JSON to XML converter. Now from the transformation method converter, I'm going to add a JSON to XML converter. I also want to set the header parameter content type. So for that, I will have a content modifier and in the message header, let's add the parameter content type. Now the output type going to be XML. Right. So let's look at the JSON to XML converter configuration. Go to processing. There is some standard configuration. Let's keep the JSON prefix separator as colon for now. Let's deactivate this add XML root element for now. And we're not going to use namespace mapping also for now. So we have a very simple configuration. We are just defining the JSON prefix separator here. Save it. Deploy. So I have created a new request in Postman to invoke the iFlow that we just created that converts JSON to XML. In the request body, I have the JSON file here. We have three orders. Let's trigger it. Now that you see, there is an error. Let's go to the message monitor and see what the issue is. Another way to access messages of a specific integration flow is can go to manage integration content and then here you will select the iFlow that you want to monitor and click on monitor message processing. So now you see our last message has failed. If you go to our root element here, so, so the root object of the JSON is orders. Specifically, it says only one member in the root object with no array or array with one value is supported. This is a known limitation of JSON to XML converter in SAP. So what is the root element here? The root element is orders and it is an array and we have three orders, but it says either it should be a none array or array with one value. So let's remove two orders. Let's only have one element in this array and see if it works. Now we have only one element in the root array and let's hit send. Now that you see it is working, but that is not our intention. We're going to have multiple orders. So this orders element going to be an array, but we still want to convert it to an XML. If you go to the documentation of JSON to XML converter in SAP help, you can see here it is documented that the JSON root object must only contain one member. We can encapsulate the whole data set here in a root element. So I added this part here. So we have to close this tag. 
Now we have a root element, which is not an array. So this should be supported by the converter. Let's see how it works. Right, now you can see the JSON format is being properly converted to the XML format we need. We can call it data, for example. And you can see a root element, XML root element is also added with the same name. Now we just manually change the JSON format so it is supported by this converter. Let's say I still want to send it without the root element here. Like this and I still want to convert it. So we can add a root element using a content modifier before we pass the, the payload to the converter. So let's add a content modifier. Then let's say add root element. Now let's add a root element. Open a tag. We'll call it root. Then the separator. What we need here is the incoming message body. So what is the incoming message body? starting from here so what we need is this part so how do we access the incoming message body using a simple expression we can call in dot body then you have to close the root element tag don't forget to change the type to expression save and deploy Now let's see if this orders input message in JSON format gets converted. Now you can see we get the, the converted XML message and you can see a root element has been added. That's because we added a root element to this JSON message coming in before it goes into this converter step. If you go to the JSON converter processing tab, you can see there's another option here to add a root element. If you select the option add root element, you can add from the converter also another root element. Let's call it data. But this is, I just want to show you what uh, the converter does if we activate this option here. Save it. Then if you trigger it, you will see on top another root element has been added called data. If you want that root element to belong to a namespace, you can do a namespace mapping. You can define the namespace here, XML namespace colon, then the name. Let's call it ns1 equals to let's say orders. Save it. And after that, if you go to the converter from here, then you can select the namespace that the root element should belong to. Then save it. Now you'll see the namespace has been added to the root element. Let's imagine this orders element now has a JSON prefix called NS2. So it will come like this. I want that also to be reflected in the XML. But if you hit send now, now you see the orders element in the XML is not reflecting any namespaces. Use namespace mapping option. Then you can add a namespace mapping. The JSON prefix is ns2 and 
I want to map it to a namespace called HTTP. Let's call it just test orders. Save it. Deploy. Now all the JSON elements under this prefix NS2 should be mapped to the XML namespace test orders. Now you will see the namespace has been added to all the order elements. All right. In this lesson, we looked at how to map JSON prefixes to XML namespaces. We also looked at how to add a root element to the XML. Also, if the incoming JSON message is having an array in the root element, we also did a workaround to add a root element to the message before converting it to XML. To see all the limitations of JSON to XML conversion step, you can refer this link here. I have also provided the link in the documentation.